What's up everybody? I'm Michael Chris, three years running bestseller at Shine On. Now I'm the CMO of Shine On. I wanted to thank you so much for checking out our YouTube video. And if you like this kind of content, I want you to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I hope you enjoy the video. What's up? Uh oh, you're up. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> We're here. here, ready to go. What's up everybody? How we doing? How are you guys doing today? I don't think I've talked to you yet. Doing awesome. Yeah. Good day. It's Friday. I love the hair. The hair is looking glorious. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you're talking to Zappy. That's no, you're talking to you. I'm talking to both of you. <laughs> um, John, John's over in uh, Amsterdam right now, and he made a post on Facebook yesterday saying that uh, uh, he was going to start the the most important relationship he could in a new place, which was his relationship with his barber. And uh, I commented that I, I knew how he could save a lot of money on haircuts. <laughs> but mm. I don't think he really he really liked it. Yeah. Um, what's up, everybody? How's everyone doing? Uh, Michael, you got cursed at a smile. Oh, how about that? I guess you don't smile very much, Kirsta. <laughs> no, I'm very serious. <laughs> Jeff says he's doing good. Uh, Donna says happy Friday. Facebook user is back for Q4. Facebook user never let us down. Sophie is uh, here with some emojis. Like I like it. So today, everybody. Uh, whoop. There we go. Try that again. We're going to be doing product teardowns. So the last teardown we did, um, let's see, two weeks ago, got a ton of uh, positive feedback. We had a lot of people reaching out to me. Uh, I know folks reached out to uh, Kirsta and Zappy on IM and some other areas and just said that they really appreciated it. I even got emails from people saying that they really liked the, the product teardowns. So we thought, hey, maybe we'll do another repeat. Plus, we've got a little bit of a special announcement for everybody at the end of this. So stay tuned, watch to the end to hear the special announcement. Uh, Kirsten and I have got something really cool that we've been working on that we're excited to share with everybody. So before we begin, you know how we like to uh, kick things off around here with a little toast. So raise up your glasses, mugs, bottles, and flasks, and join me now for the Digital Marketer's Toast. Here's to more conversions, more cash, higher cheap CPMs and higher CACs to higher CTRs, much higher CVRs to enable to add accounts and big bank accounts, up sells, down sells, and cross sells to winning products and repeat sells and to the thing that everybody knows, the riches are in the niches, but also your email flows. Are you ready? Oh, yep. Drink. Cheers. Ah, uh, Kirsten, are you drinking like a shot of espresso? Yes. Dude, hold that up to the camera. That was legit. <laughs> Look at the crema on that. That is awesome. Do you yeah, have a fancy should. espresso machine? I have a fancy coffee machine. Dang, man. That's <laughs> awesome. You know, Michael, we need to get uh, some shots for uh, Jim and I so that when we're doing yeah. you know, some on these. Yeah, we're there we go. A <laughs> little shot of espresso before every every video. I dig that. <laughs> um, I'm a coffee nerd a little bit, so I'm totally geeking out right now. I'm going to have to connect <laughs> with Kirsta afterwards <laughs> yeah, <laughs> talk more about that. Legit. All right, everybody. You guys ready for today's uh, Coffee with Michael? Uh, if you could, like this post, like it, react to it, give the post some love. It's going to help uh, get a little bit more visibility in Facebook land. And then also tell us where you're watching from in the comments. We have Shine On employees right now in Amsterdam uh, setting up the Amsterdam facility. Big news for you on that. Probably coming early next week. We're super excited about that. We've had some uh, test orders ship out from Amsterdam. They're being delivered in record time. I think we had uh, an order that was delivered in like two days to the UK, uh, three days to Germany. I mean, it was just, you're getting the same delivery times as you would normally get in the United States over in Europe now. It's freaking amazing. So we're super excited about that. Uh, let's see here. We got South Korea in the house. We had, uh, I think, New Zealand in the house earlier. Uh, NL. Is that New Zealand or Netherlands? Well, maybe. Uh, or maybe that was supposed to be an emoji and uh, Facebook messed it up. <laughs> Michael, can you remind people how they can change their name from Facebook user again? 
Oh Come yeah. On. So uh, uh, appreciate that, Zap. So um, if you actually look in this post at the bottom of the the post, you can go to streamyard.com forward slash Facebook. The URL is actually at the bottom of the post. If you click that, you can give Facebook permission to show us your name, so that we actually know who we're talking to here, and it doesn't just show up as a Facebook user. So we got Gary from Atlanta, Khalid from uh, North Africa, Morocco, Canada. Jeff is from Canada here. We've got, uh, let's see, Justine from Melbourne, Facebook user from the UK, another uh, Facebook user from Alberta. I like it. We got Vincent from California. Uh, let's see, it's kind of early. It's 8.12 there. So perfect time for coffee. You turned tuned in at just the right time. We've got uh, r and Brands from uh, Chicago, the Windy City. Uh, we've got Facebook user from Santa Barbara, Texas. Man, where are our international people at? Awesome, Texas. Uh, yeah, Texas is might as well be international. It's like a whole <laughs> different country, but so is California, really. <laughs> All right. So we got Panama. I like it. Vietnam. Welcome from Vietnam. That's pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Do we have anybody on from, from Europe here? We moved this early to get folks from Europe. And I don't think anybody's on. Someone had a question of German people here. So I'm not sure if that's someone German or not. Norway. Oh, we're still talking acronyms here. Slovenia. There we go. Uh, let's see. Oh, Stephen from the UK. I forgot we did have a few folks say they were from the UK. So welcome. We got France showing up. Or are we still talking acronyms? I don't even know anymore. We're going to move on. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for joining this week's Coffee with Michael. We are going to get into some teardowns. This has been fun. We got the Czech Republic coming in. There we go. I'm liking it. Um, we've got a big announcement on the uh, Amsterdam facility coming, so stay tuned on that. It's going to be pretty cool. Germany, now they're all showing up. They're coming out of the woodwork. All right, testimonials. Uh, Miriam, just got my first sale. I'm so happy. This is the first day I've been running ads. I use a D30 method. That's the dirty 30 method that uh, Kirsta has pioneered. Uh, the campaigns don't show where the order come from. Uh, this is a tracking thing we won't get into here. I don't think we're going to have time. One sale. Congratulations, Miriam. Love to see uh, the first purchase. You've got some swag coming your way. Somebody from my team will be reaching out. If you guys want some swag, stay tuned. We've got a little uh, instruction here at the end on how you can get it too. Then Gimma, I actually really love this one. OMG, my first sale. I've been crying for an hour. The struggle's real. I've been in POD space for two years with two stores and zero sales. Then COVID hit. I was worried about shipping if I ever got any sale. That's when I found the Shine On app, but I didn't join the Facebook group. Fast forward to June of 2021, I finally decided to check out the group, and I was amazed. I've learned so much from Michael, Zappy, and Jim, and the rest of the Shine On team. That includes you, Kirsta. Uh, more than I did from courses I had paid for in the past. You've changed my life, and I truly believe anything's possible. Thank you for giving me hope again. I love this testimonial. This makes everything we do over here. Uh, totally worthwhile. Thank you so much for thank sharing you, this. You've got some swag coming your way. What'd you say, uh, Zappy? I just said, thank you, Gemma. That's, that's really kind. We're happy to do it. Absolutely. Um, so welcome to the family. We love to have you here. Keep pushing. Q4 <laughs> is the time to be alive when it comes to e-commerce. You are in the right space. And uh, I think China is the best entrepreneurial opportunity in the history of the world. Um, and I mean that, and I think I can back that up. So you have found a very unique opportunity uh, as we move into Q4 this year. Steven, broken through that 5K mark. Woohoo! May not be earth shattering, but hopefully, dude, this is earth shattering, uh, especially if it's your first time, man. It's amazing. Hopefully the lessons learned along the way in the past six months will pave the way for an almighty Q4. You've already done 5K. Um, I'm almost certain you're going to have a gigantic uh, Q4 because the, the sales volume it's very difficult to explain to people. It goes up exponentially as we get closer to Christmas. It is not a linear increase. Like it, it basically from the middle of November onwards, the amount of sales that are out there are going to, it's just going to blow your mind. It's unbelievable. So huge thank, thank you. you to Michael, Ronnie, Sue Hale, Jim, Kirsta, and Zappy. You guys are awesome for sharing your knowledge. 
So thank you very much, Stephen. You've got some uh, swag coming your way. We appreciate you. He's joined our coaching group as well, so we should be able to help him accelerate that. Oh, awesome. So you're in the coaching group too. Congratulations on uh, taking some action here. Stay tuned to the end because we're going to talk all about the coaching group, uh, the different packages that we have, the programs we have, and things like that. You aren't going to want to miss it. All right, free swag. So each week, we randomly draw two to five posts from the group, and uh, we feature them in my Coffee with Michael, and you guys get some swag. So if you want to get featured, you want your chance to get some swag, uh, drop a testimonial post with screenshots of your sales, drop some kind of value post on like, or educational post on what's working for you or any other tips, tricks, and hacks that can help other people succeed. If you're engaging in the group and you're dropping high value content, we want to see it. We'll feature you here and we'll get you some swag over your way. We appreciate you. All right. Latest news. We're going to get through this quick so we can get to these, uh, teardowns. So the 100, 100, 100 update, this thing is driven over 7,000 sales. Right. So we launched the contest. We had over a thousand people sign up in 24 hours. Uh, the contest is closed now. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to join uh, uh, anymore. But of the people in the contest, we've had over 7000 sales. Absolutely incredible. It was a really cool group where people are holding each other accountable. Tammy is leading that. She's done an amazing job. If you want to learn about it, even though it's too late to join, go to Shine On Challenge. Dot com. We also have a Facebook group. I believe the Facebook group is Shine On Challenge as well. Uh, I don't know if we're letting people in the group anymore or not, but you might be able to kind of poke around and check that out. We'll probably run another one of these uh, in the run up to Valentine's Day and then another one for Mother's Day. So if you want to join, keep your eyes peeled because we'll have some more in the future. A quick look at the leaderboard here, which has got some bugs we're trying to work out. Um, but Far Hot here is 652 sales. Congratulations, Far Hot. Uh, then we have Win with 137 sales, uh, two. I hope I'm saying that right, buddy. 273 sales, and so on. And you get points by either making a sale or uploading SKUs. So uh, th those are like individual designs that you plan on testing, either on Etsy or on Amazon or in uh, Facebook. So at any rate, love to see the massive action everybody's taking here. Great work. All right, shots of espresso. We got uh, we had two of them released. I want to make sure you got to see one on selling high ticket items because we released Everlasting Love. I got a slide on that in just a minute, and then we also Jim put together kind of one on a toolbox for success, which I've actually not had a chance to watch. But you're definitely going to want to make sure you don't miss those. So if you're interested, uh, looks like both the shots of espresso uh, the last two weeks have been from Jim. So search his name in the Facebook group or search for shot of espresso, and you'll be able to find these and and watch them. Etsy integration. Everybody's been asking about this. Wonder when it's going to launch, that kind of thing. I got an update this morning. There was one final, very important bug that we were trying to work out of the, uh, the, the integration. And they think we're on track to have that completely finished today for launch next week. So the goal is to have this thing out the door in your hands next week at the latest. I'm going to ask, I'm going to have to ask for your forgiveness a little bit and your grace, just because this is a very important feature in the integration. Like we, we had to make sure that the bugs were worked out on it. It wasn't going to be any good for us to launch this thing with some critical bugs. And then you're having trouble syncing orders with Etsy or something like that. It's too important. We know how important it is to make sure that your Etsy customers are having a great experience. So we wanted to make sure that we took the time to do it right. So next week is when that uh, probably is going to launch. Everlasting love. We kicked this out the door. Cool thing about this product. It is solid gold. It's 10K solid gold with diamonds, with diamonds. It's awesome. So these here are not cubic zirconia. They are real diamonds. Uh, I think diamond shards are the actual uh, term for these. Uh, you can sell these for about 199 bucks. I believe our base cost is about 125 bucks. So you're looking at a $75 margin. And I promise you, if you hit the right message card on this product, you could sell this for even more than 199 bucks. Guaranteed, if you hit the right message card on this that's selling like hotcakes, you'll be probably be able to push the $250 range uh, with this particular product. Kirsten, do you have anything to share that you'd like to share about this product? I know you've been uh, testing with it. I was just going to say a lot of people are doing the 239 to 50 price point. So I think um, the 199 will be selling it short. So there you go. You have like between $75 and $150 margin on this product. So it's going to be an incredible product. 
also don't forget you have like etsy you can throw these up on an etsy store or you can just have this hanging out in your store cursed has had a ton of sales on this where he's led with a different hero product on facebook ads someone comes to a store or customers in his store they see this product and they buy it so this is yep. a great product just to have kind of hanging out because it's an opportunity for someone to pick up and buy yep so just pair your winning message cards with the same necklace don't flood your store with products try to keep you know sort of eight eight or so per collection so uh you have your relevant products at the top so they can come and buy the higher ticket items as well yeah 100 percent. the other cool thing about this product is it comes with this really beautiful certificate of authenticity so this goes in every single uh order that that goes out with this particular product so i mean it's just we are going to change print on demand. You just wait for 2022. We've got some plans that are going to blow everybody's mind in 2022. All right, product launch update. So these have been kind of pushed in November. Some of these were bugs we needed to work out. Um, we discovered some, how would I put this? Uh, uh, you know, when you're running a large scale operation and you're having new machines and things like that, there, there's, there are always problems that kind of come up. Well, we have learned some things about uh, like leather, for example, like they have to be properly ventilated and there are OSHA requirements and there are various regulatory statutes that have to be met, you know, all kinds of stuff. And then we've got to get landlord permission and project manager permit. There's all these things that just kind of stacked up that have resulted in some delays on these. These are coming in November. We are rushing, we are moving as fast as we can to uh, get these available to everybody. Um, I can tell you, we are as excited as you are to get these things out the door, uh, all the test products, all the samples we've done, all the testing we've done in-house, all of it is coming back superb. We know you guys are gonna smash it in Q4 with these products. So we are excited to get them out the door as quickly as we can for you. Uh, just looking in the chat here, making sure I'm not missing any important questions. Um, and Metal Art too, I think Metal Art might, might go live next week uh, if we're lucky. So if you're a praying person, please uh, send some prayers on that because uh maybe, maybe it'll be live next week all right on page add-ons on page add-ons these are live now on the platform i'm reiterating it in case you missed the announcement this is my this was my most anticipated feature of all of 2021 i've been looking forward to this thing literally since january i think that this is this is the feature that will make three digit average order values the norm across the the, the platform now, it's going to take us a little bit of time to experiment with the exact combination of add-ons that we want. We're going to be doing CRO testing on this to make sure it's getting the highest take rates possible for your pages. But this is massive. It's basically going to allow you to make a heck of a lot more money on every visitor that comes through the funnel. And don't forget, it's not just on-page add-ons. We also have post-purchase upsell funnels now. So if somebody buy something as an add-on and then they do like an, another upgrade in cart and then post purchase they have the opportunity to buy more and it's christmas people are in buying mode they're in spending mode they're wanting to stuff their, their stockings with gifts if you know what i'm saying and get, and also keep in mind that they're willing to buy a lot of things from one store because it saves them the hassle of having to go out and shop or go to a bunch of different stores or deal with crowds and things like that so it, it's just this is an amazing, amazing time. I, I come alive every year right around this time because the opportunity is so massive. So on-page add-ons, they're on the platform. You can also have the on-page add-ons on your app as well. Make sure you're using the Shine On template. So if you use Shopify, you have the Shine On app, make sure you're using the Shine On product template and you're going to be able to have on-page add-ons uh, on the product template as well. So make sure you're using this. I promise you it's going to make you a heck of a lot more money as we move in through Q4. Uh, just a quick reminder to everybody, we CRO tested a completely brand new page. It resulted in a 25% uh, uplift in conversions. That's going to be live on the platform soon, so stay tuned. And then we also did a uh, huge CRO boost on the, the package protection. We got it, the take rate all the way up to 10% on that. So that's looking amazing too. Again, it's just money, 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 money as we move into Q4. We're trying to help you uh, succeed as much as possible. All right, and then finally, if the best way to check out announcements here, um, in case you missed any, and there have been a lot, a lot, as we've moved into Q4, just go into the Facebook group up at the very top. If you're on desktop, you're going to see like a little announcements link. Click that link. Basically, anything that's important is tagged as an announcement, and you'll be able to scroll through there and always see the latest news. Woo! All right. 
a lot breath. of stuff, man. <laughs> um, but it's good stuff, and we're all excited for it. Let's jump over to Miro. Uh, you guys still have the latest <clears throat> for that? Yep. All right, good. We are going to do our product teardowns. Bear with me here, and let me get over there. Share screen. All right, product teardowns. So again, I told you we have another announcement here kind of at the end. So um, we're probably going to spend, I don't know, we'll see how many of these we get through. Um, I don't want to run too terribly long on it because we did this two weeks ago and then we have this other announcement. But uh, let's jump into it. So I'm going to zoom in here. The text on this one's kind of small. This is our first product teardown. Why don't we do the same thing we did last time, guys, and take uh, turns? Uh, we can start with Zappy if you're ready, Zappy. You don't feel like we're yeah. putting you on the spot. Why don't yeah, you kick we'll us off on this one, and then we'll kind of do a roundtable. Yeah, so when I first look at this, I'm I'm just thinking that you know, the heading could be larger. Uh, it's the first thing that people see on the design really is that top part. You know, is it to my wife, to my husband, to whatever? I really like the I like the script typeface that you use here. I think that's nice. But I probably would just bump that up a little bit. So what does it say to the love of my life? Um, overall, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a simple design like we teach. I think that, uh, let's see, what does it say? You are my one and only, my happily ever after, my dream come true, my soulmate, and my best friend. My heart is eternally yours, and I am yours forever. I love you. I, I really don't have any complaints about the message itself. Um, I'd, probably make, I'd probably make the bottom larger, too. Uh, it just really feel not that it has to just completely be exploded here, but um, I would I would still fill this space more. Maybe even make I love you a little bit larger. You can bump it down a little bit, uh, just so it's really legible. Especially if you're when you're using it for a an ad image, it's it's important that people can read it really. You know, so we want those close. We have these close up shots, and we want to be able to read the message. Uh, right there in the ad too so that helps with some of that as well um, so i don't know that i would i don't know if i have much else to really say about that i'm curious to hear what you guys think um can i go next yep you're up buddy so personally um i would probably stick to something proven for the for the top section like wife soulmate and future wife uh, girlfriend, something like uh, going back to the greeting card style. While something like this could work, like when you uh, change the two um, person, the uh, this is something I'd try after I qualify a phrase. I wouldn't s start with something ambitious. Uh, not that it's not to say that it can't work. Uh, it can take a little bit longer to get something off the ground, which is more ambitious in terms of. Uh, the recipient so i would probably go back and you know choose a proven uh receiver uh at the top and potentially at the bottom if you're doing husband uh to my uh to my wife love your husband sort of style so that that would be my first um correction here I, i'm not a big fan of the cursive font personally but um you know some people may be uh I'm sorry, some people may like that style. So generally when I do something like this, I probably not go with it for my cold traffic. So not test or scale with it at the top. I'd probably introduce this somewhere in the middle. So people that have like clicked on my ad or like engage with my Facebook page. So uh, lower budgets and test them uh, with people that are already warm. I wouldn't probably start with something like this at the top. Uh, because, uh, you know, when you start introducing, so that's one new element and you've got these um, graphic elements. So you've got quite a few elements here which could create um, some uh, some rejections from the buyer. Uh, oh, sorry, not rejection, ob objection. So when we're, when we're putting these products in front of people in the news feed, we want to basically remove any uh, objections they have. And that, that's the reason why when we use like, UGCs, they're so effective because it um, moves away from the thought of um, uh, that it could be a scam. So uh, that's why I'd probably stick, uh, and I'd probably uh, also make the font a bit bigger as well. So I'd probably go a bit bigger 
um, and use the spacing hey. a bit more. Hey, um, Kirsta. Yeah, so, uh, yep. we're, we're getting some feedback in the chat that uh, they can't hear you. Okay. Um, I, I'm kind of, I'm hearing you okay, but uh, that's a feedback we're getting in the chat here. I mean, maybe a little bit low, but we can definitely hear you. Yeah. So how about now? Is that better? Uh, maybe, yeah, if you can pull your mic closer, that's a little, maybe a little bit better. Yeah, you guys let us know if that's better, but uh, sorry to interrupt, man. Why don't you go ahead and continue and we'll we'll figure that's this out. That's pretty much all I had, but it's sad to hear that no one really heard anything. <laughs> um, no, we, we heard it. I heard you. Matt Bay, says you're loud and clear, and I trust that dude with my life. <laughs> um, we need to have Matt on here. Matt, why don't you join us uh, at some point? Facebook user says you're better. Um, all right, so. Okay. Great. Look, I don't have much to add over uh, kind of what Kirsta and Zappy have already shared, but I will say that I'm hesitant to mess with uh, scripted fonts too much um, just because I don't think everybody finds them easy to read. Um, specifically when they kind of like do these loop-de-loops and stuff like that, I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying that uh, I tend to steer clear of them. I don't mind fancy fonts at all. I don't, but when you do a fancy font, it needs to be big and it needs to be very easy to read, right? So you don't want something that's too like slanted or too scripty with like tons of lots of squigglies and things like that. Um, I'm not necessarily saying that this one is in the ballpark. This one to me is a little bit in a gray area. It might just be fine, but it definitely, um, I definitely agree with everyone else's sentiments here that all of this is just, it's entirely too small. Um, all the text here has got to get bigger. This is one of those where, first of all, you know how much I had to zoom in on it just to make it legible on the screen. But I, I, I think that this one would be very difficult to read um, on a phone, on a cell phone. So uh, you have to think about that. The other thing is there, there's very little contrast. Man, uh, yeah, me... I was going to say that too. To, you could probably make the text blacker. It needs to be. Ex yeah. Yes. There's very little contrast between the, the body font down there and your like just your background here. It's kind of like, I don't know, it's getting lost. Um, so you can, you can either make it bold, you can make it bigger, you can make it darker. There's a few different things that uh, you can do to fix that. But remember, um, as a general rule, people are on their cell phones and you're going to have to stop them in a scroll and they're going to have to be able to read what is right on the message card in the, the news feed, right? You don't want them to have to click. You don't want them, them to have to zoom in. Nothing like that. You're going to lose them if they have to do any of that. It's got to be bold in your face, and you got to slap them with some kind of sentimental, emotional, tear-jerking kind of phrase. Um, yeah, because the other thing which can happen is if people are clicking the link to read the phrase and then they don't convert, Facebook will also uh, like the, it'll es estimate your conversion rate, and that will also hinder the performance of the ad. So you don't want people clicking on the ad just to read the phrase because that can also hinder the performance of the ads as well. Yeah, so totally. I think the key takeaway ultimately is not necessarily, oh, should I use script or not? It's really about clarity. Uh, you want people, if you have a script that's really easy to read, like this one's, you know, kind of on the edge, just make sure that it's clear. Make sure people can read it. Make sure it, it's clear, whatever font you end up using. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. and if you have to do yeah. straight black, you go straight black with the with the coloring so that it's easy to read. You know, it's something else I want to point out too when it comes to picking your mock-ups. If you have a design that's kind of like this, where it's kind of like white and it's just black on white, and that's it's fine to do. I, I've I've hit a massive winner that was exactly like that. Um, I would recommend using a different kind of mock-up image as your hero because the your your your, your your product, like the message card, starts to get lost even in the background, mm, right? It's right like white. it's washed out. But if you come down here and look at this mock-up, for example, look how dramatic it looks. You've already got the contrast. You've got the drama. Um, you, this one already has a higher perceived value than this one. And it's just because like the, the product itself stands out. There's contrast. It's not getting washed out and competing against the background. I think we've... Uh, Pretty much ran this one into the ground. Want to go to the next one? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Kirsta, you are going to be up on this one. Uh, Sounds good. There we go. 
So uh, why don't you start by reading it and then take it away? Sure. So hooked on you, I may have reeled in. An, uh, sorry, I may have reeled in other fish in my life, but you are the the only keeper. I I love you. Yeah. So this is short and sweet. Uh, the phrase could probably use a bit more context. I have seen like short phrases work, but more times than not, uh, it's the, so this is probably what I would use, uh, when I do my phrase building as, um, as either the close or the hook. So this is the first part of the phrase. And then I would mix in something more, um, emotional in the middle. So, uh, something like, um, uh, mm, I'm trying to think, oh, but we'll come back to that. So, uh, let's, let's go, uh, to the top. So we've got hooked on you. So again, this is going back to what I said in the previous, um, previous phrase, but uh, sorry, the previous example, the difference here is it, it, it caters to the niche so that you can probably get away with doing this style. So you can probably go hooked on you for life sort of thing. Um, as, as the title, but again, it, I would probably start with testing like proven receiver, like to my wife and then still do like the fishing niche style card. Um, I'm not sure about the graphics. Uh, I think that, uh, if you're going to do this pro probably can do it, a, uh, not so, like, cause the colors, it's kind of like takes away from the design and the message like you're just looking at the graphics and there's no appeal for my eyes to read the message it's more like uh, looking at the fish like you don't want you don't want the fish or your graphic elements to be the highlights of your message card you want the message to stand out so really um this part should be the first thing that i'm looking at to read and i'm not i'm looking at the the graphics so when when your eyes are like drawn away by like other elements in the design, it can, um, it can take away from, take away from the key part. So, um, uh, again, so the, uh, so the greeting card style is probably where I'd start with something like this and then transition into some, something more ambitious further down the funnel and test different variations of the design. Um, and with the phrase, uh, we can probably add, uh, one of the like popular phrases, which you've probably seen time and time again. Um, uh, like the always remember phrase or, um, what was the other one? Like yeah. the first kiss, first mm -hmm. date phrase. There's like quite a few phrases which you've probably seen time and time again when you're doing product research. So you can use one of the repeating phrases in the middle part to uh, emphasize the emotional uh, hook to the buyer. So th this was good to get them to start to read the phrase, but you need some sort of substance, in my opinion, to really sell to, to the audience. Does that make sense? I think that's pretty much all I have on this design. Yeah, totally, man. So what I'd like to add is... Um, I almost feel like this one's missing the niche. So like, is the niche, or are we going for like someone that's kind of interested in the fishing kind of thing? And if so, then I think the design is a little off because it's, um, <clears throat> this, this, it feels a little cartoony to me. And, uh, you know, I would expect it to be more like kind of rustic or outdoorsy <laughs> or something that aligns a little bit better with the kind of fishing kind of niche. That's if, that's what you were going for on this. Um, yep. I do totally agree with Kirsta that like these fish in particular, they're, they're, they're very distracting. Um, maybe without color, like if they were gray scaled or something like that, uh, maybe it'd be a little bit uh, better and not quite as distracting. I agree, totally agree with Kirsta. We need more meat on the phrase. Keep in mind, it's, it's the phrase that pays. If they cry, they'll buy. Like if you can arouse almost any kind of emotion in somebody and you do that with the phrase, they're going to be more likely to buy the product. That should be your number one prerogative as you move into this is move people emotionally. And then, um, then uh, uh, they'll be more likely to buy. So at any rate, um, 
I would also add that, that this here is it's much too small. Uh, let me get my little marker out so you can see where I'm at. This here, the 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 kind of intro. I feel like that's way too small. It needs to be a little bigger. It needs to be in your face. Um, yeah. Other than that, I, I think I pretty much agree on what Kirsta said. In the background, yeah, I, I kind of agree too. The background, is, the background to me looks like a pair of blue jeans. It's like denim yep. jeans, or something like that. Yeah. Um, so I think you need to you need to really think about the niche and who you're going after. And if it's the fishing thing, you need to go study what has worked well um, in this niche and try to borrow some some winning elements from things that you've seen that works well. This feels super cartoony to me, and I, I would expect it to be more kind of outdoorsy more rustic, that kind of thing. So that's what I think I have to, to share. Zappy, what do you got? Yeah, um, and I know that I agree with mostly everything you guys have said. And if everybody that's watching to you realize that even we have some different opinions on certain things and a lot of it does still come down to sub subjectivity. But at the end of the day, you know, once you have your design, it's about the testing. You know, we can think something looks great or looks terrible all day long, but it's, really you know there's there's core elements you know foundational elements that we're we're trying to stick with here but at the end of the day it's is it going to sell or not and that really only comes from doing a test but i agree that the the fish are distracting the way they are now you know maybe you could go with something a little bit more campy like that if it was like a four daughter or granddaughter like a like a younger child kind of a thing um it still needs to be in balance with the whole design here <clears throat> um like michael said you can sometimes take the color out, make it, make them just white and then put some transparency on it. Again, I would change this design, but if you were incorporating some elements, sometimes just being really subtle still can be look elegant and beautiful. So you could take just maybe one fish and put transparency on it. So they sort of blend in with the background and it's just an accent on the side. Any of the, the visual elements should be complementary to everything else. So, you know, the, the star here is always really the jewelry. And then it's the message card itself. So are the, yeah, the message itself. Um, so, oh yeah. So when I was thinking if you were going to incorporate something with fish, again, if it works, maybe some, you could have fish kissing on there. I think you were trying to go for, since this was, I love you kind of thing. You're going for, here's the male fish, here's the female fish. But if you did find like a little element or a place that you could put it in there, I think that could be something that would be cute, maybe with a little heart or something, but hooked on you. Um, yeah, I, I was with Michael too. I wasn't sure if this was intended to be, hey, for a, a for my fishing wife kind of a thing, or if it was just a general, you know, play on words. Hey, I'm hooked on you kind of thing. If you were going to go for something like that, that would be an option too. You could say to my, you know, if, if your wife was just, you know, women that are huge in fishing or whatever the thing is, to my fishing wife, you know, to, to draw in a certain crowd if that's who you're really targeting. Um, I also agree with uh, Krista in terms of adding a little bit more element. I wrote something here. What does it say? That I just, off the top of my head, I said the day I caught you was the best day. Um, wait, let's see. What, what did I even type? The day I caught you was the best day. was the day I got the best catch of my life. Um, I think that if you're going to sort of play off of that, you could do something that is that is just a, really tugs more at the heartstrings somehow. Um, I... I I will say the first time I read the original message, message, I may have reeled up another fish in my life. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of that. Like, oh, I've, you know, I've seen lots of other women or been with lots of other women or that sort of a sentiment. I think the more you can focus on the existing relationship, the better. So I probably would kind of scrap some of that in general, but that's, that's just me. Um, so those were, I think those were my main thoughts overall with that one. Yeah, I think um, I agree with you. I think we did pretty good on this one. Let's move to the next one. Um, is this one me? Yep. I think it is. All right. So to my beautiful daughter, wishing you a very Merry Christmas with all my love. All right. So first of all, this phrase just is not going to do it. Um, this is no one's going to buy this. I wouldn't even spend any money on it. Um, the problem is the phrase, it, it lacks emotional resonance, right? And that is 100% what you need to sell. If you have a phrase that, that hits on the emotional cords, right, that you're, you need to, almost everything else we talk about um, is minimized. There's tons of forgiveness in everything else. Uh, when it, like, if you have the phrase that, that hits on those emotional cords, 
then your design can be a little messed up. You could have even a jewelry piece that's a little messed up. Your ads could not be as great. Your copy could not be very good. You might have a website with some issues on it, but as long as you hit on that phrase, there's a lot of forgiveness in other areas. But if you miss the phrase, you're, you're, you're never going to be able to turn it into a winner. Just period. It's never going to happen, right? The phrase is 80% of what decides success or failure uh, in this game, right? So this particular phrase here, just we wish you a Merry Christmas with all my love. It, it just completely lacks emotion. It's not going to resonate with anybody. I don't think anybody's going to buy this. And I also noticed you've got everlasting love in here which I assume is, you know, we're selling at higher price points. There's just not enough here to drive uh, that kind of sale. <clears throat> we need to go. I would highly recommend you go back, try to stick to a proven phrase, right? We, we've had lots of winning phrases come through. You can use the Franken phrases technique where you find some phrases from different bestsellers through product research and you kind of patch together maybe your own little unique phrase based on proven segments of other phrases. You can do that. I know for the daughter niche in particular that uh, you're braver than you believe, smarter than you imagine, stronger than you seem or whatever. That particular phrase has sold, you know, buku dollars. I think it, it's a good opportunity to do some franken phrasing maybe with that. And you could add that here. Then when it comes to the actual, uh, uh, was somebody speaking up? No. Nope. When it comes to the actual design itself, um, you know, I, the, the fonts could maybe use a little bit of improvement, but, you know, I think they're big. The phrase is small enough that, that the fonts are big and they're kind of legible. Um, you know, I'd probably reserve my critique on the fonts for now, but I would I would shift more towards kind of the design elements. This is this is Canva clip art. You can see it from 10,000 miles away. Um, I think when you use clip art kind of stuff, it, it's not to say it. Never do it, and it's not to say that it can't work. I don't mean that at all, but if, if you're not careful in kind of your selection and your messaging and then other design elements, it can make it look cheap. And in my opinion, uh, this particular piece of clip art, it, it's, it's kind of pulling down the overall value uh, of the product. So I think that's what I have to share on this one. What do you yeah. got, Zappy? So one thing that I was thinking too is, this is something you might find in a store if you were just you know, going to go to the store, very basic, you know, vanilla kinds of phrases. It's not that something like that couldn't sell. If, let me put it this way. If you want certain products in your store that are just kind of there, maybe they're secondary products, this is something that someone might pick up. If you had it in your Etsy store, someone might see it. If you have it on your Shopify store they and they've gone there for some other product and they see it, this is something that they could potentially buy. Um, Yes, I would still change some of the graphic elements, but I'm just making the point that you have products that are your lead products. You know, the the hot item that you are literally trying to convert people in ads for, those are the ones that definitely have to be something that's unique, that really tugs at emotional heartstrings, that's going to get people in to, to purchase that product. But then you also have other things like this, where they've come in from some other hot product and they may pick up this too. So keep that in mind. It's some things aren't necessarily that they wouldn't work, but it's that it's not something that's going to get the click and get purchased from an ad too. I, I would like to say, I, I totally agree with that. Um, all last year we had kind of our own storefront and we were, we were driving email campaigns to it. And there were definitely products that people purchased that, that came to the store through like an email campaign that I never would have worked on Facebook. Right? right. And I would agree that this product probably fits more into that category of product. Yeah, for sure. And again, at this price point too, you know, we really, I would really recommend staying as elegant as possible with, with the design. Um, even if they, even if they got rid of the whole middle section there of the wreath and the snowflakes or whatever those are, that would make it better already. So it just, again, it, at different price points, you are expecting a certain level of elegance. And, uh, and so I think you just have to keep that in mind. 100%. What do you got, Kirsta? I just have to agree. I think um, uh, everything's been covered apart from, like, I'll just add and say, uh, it's another product which I'd probably test in the middle of funnel. Like, 
um, whether it be a catalog DPA or something like that, where I show more products of the store because you like, as you said, email campaign, people pick it up. So this will cater. So when you've got your winning product, your winning phrase at the top, uh, there is people that will come through and not purchase that winning product. So when you, when you do like the middle of funnel, when, like when we talk about this part here, this is where you can show more products, which are similar to the first product. So this could be something that gets you sales for people that are warm traffic already. So um, this is where you can show your different products and potentially pick up sales for a product like this in there. So this is um, capturing the people that don't want the winning phrase. Um, so again, this is where you can potentially match your winning phrase with different jewelry pieces and um, higher ticket items so you can run with something like uh, interlocking hearts at the top and then upsell the solid gold in the middle so you don't waste uh, sorry you don't spend a lot of your um, advertising spend on trying to sell the uh, um, the uh, everlasting love at the top so you can sell it in the middle uh, because some people want that little bit extra and you're you show that little bit extra over here so you get like really high return on ad spend in the middle whereas you uh you still get the most amount of conversions at the top so that's that's what i would recommend to just show it to people uh, lower down that have already um rejected the top product they haven't converted on the top product yeah totally agree and again you know i mentioned it earlier and curse is talking about it now i mean he he's actually had some sales like this right um so uh he's speaking from experience here that that we've seen that work for this particular product all right why don't we do one more and then we'll jump to uh kind of our announcement yep um we're going pretty quick today i have to say real quick before we get into this next one that we did product teardowns last year around this time and i'm amazed at how much improvement there is uh, year over year in the, in the, in the products. It, it is yeah. seriously, it is truly unbelievable how much better all these message cards are compared to last year. Last year, um, we probably could have spent a half hour on every message card that came up this year. It's most people you are, you're hitting kind of the right marks. It's clear. You've been watching the trainings and taking action. So just congratulations. I, I'm super impressed with what you're putting out. All right, so uh, is it Zappy's turn? Yeah, I haven't looked at this one yet. So sometimes I like to look at it fresh too, just to get that first impression. So we got to my wife. I'll just read, read through it real quick. I know the distance is hard. I know I keep working long hour, but my day starts and ends with you. You don't cross my mind. You live in it. I love you forever and always. Love your husband. Okay, so several things going on here. Uh, they, if at all possible, I suggest you can't see my pen, but anyways, I'm circling wife. Uh, make sure that at least the who it's to is is easy to see. It's a little bit you know covered over here, obviously. So I would put that up there. Um, I like. I kind of like the, you know, this, this, this kind of a design, I think would appeal to certain people, you know, with black and then the red, I think it can work. I know. So I know the distance is hard. See, I think, okay. So an, a side note here, if, if you have certain words that really are worth bolding or changing the color, I think that that can be a good strategy. Let me see if I can change my color here. <laughs> I want to circle things and I don't have the right to say. Okay. So you know, like this, uh, I think that can be good to choose certain words that can stand out in your, in your message. Um, let me, sorry, I'm playing around with these tools too much. Uh, anyways, I know the distance is hard. I know I keep working long hours. So we have a typo here, of course, and there's no punctuation. So I'm sure it's supposed to be long hours. Um, but my day starts and ends with you. You don't cross my mind. You live in it. So I don't know. It's just, I guess the phraseology is a little bit awkward to me in general. I think it, it has sort of the, some of the elements there. Um, 
the love of your husband part at the bottom is a little hard to read for me. I think that could be clear. I think you're maybe using the same as you did for the wife. For this large wife part at the top, I think that was okay. But at the bottom, it, it's a little bit harder to read. So maybe just make that uh, clear font. Um, what else would I say about this? I might sit here and think a little bit about the phrase and type something on the side. Um, but if I was trying to, if, yeah, I, I don't know. So I, I apologize. I'm just sort of thinking through and looking at it. So if you, I might be like, you know, I know we've been apart for a long time. The distance is difficult, but I'm, but you're always in my mind. You're always in my heart. Um, my day starts and ends with you on my mind. Uh, I don't know. You just, I think that there's could be a little bit more blending of the phrase there and I apologize. I can't do it off the top of my head, but uh, what do you guys got? Um, so for me, I, it's, it's an attention thing as well. So the first thing that I see is I see this red, I don't get drawn to the important part, which is uh, the phrase. Um, so you could tone this down and go like more of the mahogany darker sort of, uh, or like a purplish color, like just so it's not, um, not the centerpiece of the design of, of the, of the necklace uh, of the, um, product, right? So you want, you want the phrase and the, the receiver to stand out the most. And that also causes problems for the placement of two Maya. So it's like, it's getting hit by the necklace because it, it's using all of this, uh, real estate to do this, uh, graphic image, which, you know, could work with this, um, particular, uh, design but I, I would probably test this later so I, my first design would probably just be to my wife and the message um, you can do the bolding with the uh, sorry the highlighting of the phrase elements with with the red that's fine um, but I would probably do this as like a set second iteration adding the graphic element um, and then seeing if that improves conversion I wouldn't start with um, you know using all this real estate to uh, grab attention and draw away from the phrase because the phrase is what sells um and that's pretty much all that i really have i'd i'd probably since the message is a bit more uh sorry uh, short i would probably make a bigger and move this down a little bit and um use a little bit more line spacing and some letter spacing to use up all of the space that i can here at the bottom my turn yes, sir. so um first when it comes to the phrase uh i know i keep working long hour it should be long hours so we we, we have kind of a, a mistake there i don't know if that's a spelling mistake or something deeper where we're having issues with grammar because maybe english isn't the first language also notice even though it's minor um i know i keep working long hour there, there's no comma there's no period like this bit of the phrase doesn't end correctly. And then it immediately goes into, but my day start and it starts and ends with you. Um, so I would recommend if English isn't your first language, definitely pair up with somebody, get on a buddy system just to make sure things are being proofread before they're published. The next thing is I actually feel like you have opportunity to, to perhaps experiment with niche. Um, and that might be missed here. Now I'm with Kirsta that the number one variable you should be focused on with testing is your phrase. You got to get the phrase kind of nailed down before you start doing some of the other experimental things. But just just hear the phrase again. I know the distance is hard. I know I keep working long hours. My day starts and ends with you. You're describing a type of person, right? This could be, hey, could you uh, maybe mute uh, for me, Zappy? Oh, sorry. Oh, no worries. Um, still hearing that echo. Test. Maybe it's Kirsta. Um, at any rate, uh, you're describing the type of person that the distance is hard. They're working long hours, that kind of thing. Um, so I, what comes to my mind is like a trucker, a uh, perhaps maybe a veteran uh, or, or somebody that has to travel a lot for a job, uh, that kind of thing. And I actually think you might have opportunity here to uh, niche down a little bit and go after one of those particular segments. So I don't think you should overlook that, but you definitely want to test the phrase first, 
do the other variable second. I completely agree there. I actually kind of like this font that uh, was picked for the, I think my, uh, hang on, get my pen, pen ready for battle here. I actually kind of like this font. I, I think that's an okay font to do if you're going to do a fancy font and you want something to kind of stand out. Totally agree that this decal is way too much. It's too big. It's too in your face. It is completely distracting. When you look at this, your eye gets immediately drawn towards it. But the rest of it to me actually feels kind of elegant. This font here paired with this font here actually works for me. The, the size, I think, needs to be a little bit bigger. It needs to be more legible. I agree with everybody's uh, other points on this. I feel like this is on track. It just needs some modifications. And then uh, should go back out the door and retest it a little bit more. And uh, I think that's what I have. You can probably kill this. Uh, whoops. I'm supposed to be drawing an X over that. You can probably kill that altogether. Um, and to be quite honest with you, you may not need that at all. Uh, You'd have to kind of play with that to see what looks good. But I think that's the uh, feedback I've got. Zappy, what are you writing over here on the side? I'm just typing some ponderings here. I'm not saying that this is – never think that I'm that these are winning phrases here off the cuff, but this is just sort of how my mind works at least. I was trying to just – I was looking at the phrase, and you can do this for creating your own phrases too. You know, find a few different ones and pull different elements – or rewrite something or kind of get the gist of a sentence or a phrase. And then, and I know not, not everybody, you know, it's not something that everyone can necessarily do, but that's basically how you can do it. You know, just look at a sentence. So I got, I don't know, even though being at a distance is hard, loving you is easy. Despite long hours at work, you are always on my mind. And I long for when I will be with you again, or I always long for when I will be with you again. Just, it's so hard because it, again, it's subjective. But it's like, how do you, what's the difference between one phrase that's not emotional and one that is, or one that tugs at a heartstring and one doesn't? Sometimes it's hard to hard to know that. So, if you're not someone who, you know, can dig in like that into emotion, or you, you, and when you're writing your own stuff, it's hard. So, you know, find someone else, right? If you have a family member or a friend or something, the very worst, you know say, hey, read this. Does this sound emotional to you? If you're writing for a, a, trying to do a two-daughter phrase from dad, find if you're not a dad yourself, find a dad and say, hey, you know, does this, is this something that sounds like it resonates with you? You know, just something like that even. So anyways, those are my thoughts. <laughs> Totally. So why don't we, um, we do have a, we're, we're doing all right on time. Let's do this. Let's, uh, we're going to throw the last one to the, to the audience here. So here's the last one. Uh, I want to know what everybody else has to say about it. So you guys have been here, you've been taking notes because you're amazing students. I know you've watched all of our previous coffee with Michaels. I know that you know how to do these message cards, like the back of your hand. So in the comments below, we're looking for constructive criticism here, right? I don't want negativity. I don't want any, you know, let's, let's go easy on people. We're all trying to learn here. Uh, let's get some constructive criticism in the comments for this. I'm going to go ahead and read it. You guys start typing up uh, what you think about this one and what we can do to improve it. So uh, looks like it's kind of got this pastel yellow with the flower decals all over the place. To my mom, uh, this is the love knot uh, jewelry item, by the way. From the time I took my first breath up until this very day, you have gently lit my way like an angel. Always put me first for everything you do, coloring my days with fairy tales and sweet dream nights. I am grateful your arms are always open to comfort me when my feelings hurt. You are so special, a gift from above. Love, your daughter. All right, let's see what you guys have to say about it. So I'm going to read through the comments and we'll feature some that I think are on the mark. All you Facebook users out there, hit StreamYard.com forward slash Facebook and uh, uh, allow it to see your name because we've got a ton of people here that I have no clue who you are. So the phrase is too long, says one Facebook user. Um, maybe. It's definitely on the longer side. I agree with you there. I think the problem is it's just it, you, you can't read it. Um, I think if it was bigger and larger, it is actually, it's too, it's a little too long, but I think if it was bigger and larger, it would, it would kind of minimize uh, that effect. So no, I think you're on the money there. Good point. Uh, text is small and cramped. 
totally agree with you. It's being squeezed in between these decals, which uh, aren't adding to it. Uh, and by the way, Kirsten Zappi, if you have something to add here, uh, feel free to to jump in. Hard to read the phrase. Yep, everybody, everybody, you're focusing on the phrase. Uh, great job to you. You're definitely paying attention here. So we love that. Um, too many different kinds of flowers and colors. Messaging too small. Yeah, I do. I totally agree with that, actually. the uh, uh, This is different than this, which is a little weird because it, it starts to break symmetry, right? You've got symmetry up here and you have symmetry up here, but then it gets broken down here. And, um, you know, that, that creates a distraction that draws your eye. Your brain sees that and it, it's starting to puzzle that out and trying to break it apart. So, yeah, I agree. That's, that's a problem. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, I think what uh, another thing when we're talking about, you know, different kinds of flowers, uh, you're kind of like, this is what I, when I was talking about objections from the buyers. So you have to find people that like these flowers, right? So when it's showing to the large, uh, large audience, you know, some people might like sunflowers or different flowers. So you kind of have to cater to the buyer's flower preferences as well. So, um, that, that's a thing where you're limiting the amount of people that can potentially buy. And then, you know, in, in, in the middle of funnel, you can try different flowers. You can try uh, red roses, sunflowers and see which one works. And then you can try and bump that up to the top and see if it converts well in cold traffic. So that, that, that's basically my thoughts on like the, the flowers when, when you, when you do them in designs and yet yeah, just stick to one, like it's got the good idea at the top, but then, you know, we're, we're going everywhere else at the bottom. Yeah, I agree with that completely. Um, I will say love knot is not necessarily a bad, bad piece. If you're going to have some flowers it at least kind of complements in terms of shape. Um, so it's not incredibly distracting. Uh, Michelle says, hard to see phrase, flowers too big. Yep, agree with you. I think everybody, you're doing a great job because everybody's picking up on, on that. Love Knot doesn't pop out against pastel. Uh, yeah, that's probably true. I mean, there's no, uh, the, 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 how would you put it? You lose some drama. Um, drama is going to raise the perceived value of a product. Right. So and you can get drama. You can achieve that effect through contrast, um, which is why, you know, this particular mock up tends to do pretty well. Uh, it, it's dramatic. You know, it, it feels more expensive. Um, and, yeah, I think having the love knot dropped against this, which is already kind of white. It's a lighter color on the value spectrum. Um, dropping it right against this yellow kind of pastel. I don't think that works. So I think you're on the money there. Um, or at least it could be improved is probably a better way to put that. Uh, let's see. I'm, just, I'm trying to see if we have any other comments here that are that are different. Um, contrast is missing. Yeah, we just kind of covered that. Leading space between the lines is too tight. Yeah, I would agree with that. So what, what uh, Jeff is saying here is the space in between these lines is really tight. So... Look, it's a little hard to know if that's actually the issue or if the phrase is just so small, you know, because the the leading space between the lines, I believe, um, scales proportionally with the phrase. So if the text were larger, I would imagine that spacing would be different. Um, but either way, I agree with you. It's it's too cramped. It's too difficult. It's it's very difficult to kind of read this. Um, all right. I'm just going to quickly look to see if anybody has anything unique or different to say about this one. If not, I think we're going to move on. Yeah, so sometimes you can take some sure. phrase like this and just shorten it up. You know, take that first line is kind of what I started doing there. It's a little bit off screen, I see, but um, let me start. You get you know get to the end of writing something out, and you're thinking, oh, gee, this maybe I had, maybe it's too much. You can simplify it. So from the time I took my first breath up until this very day, you have gently lit my way like an angel. And so I just wrote something like from my first breath, you have gently lit my way like an angel or, you know, not a lot shorter, but it still tightens that up a little bit. Sometimes less is more. A lot of times with phrases, I just depends. So that's one way you could technically go through each line and kind of tighten some things up or just remove a sentence or here or there. What's that? 
You know, I, I completely forgot to mention when it comes to the phrase, again, I think we've got some English issues or something going on because let's let's just read it one last time and then I think we'll we'll wrap this up. From the time I took my first breath up until this very day, that, that kind of works, even though it's a mouthful, you've gently lit my way like an angel. You have an opportunity to rhyme there that was passed and rhyming will help with the flow of a, of a message any day. And it can also help increase the emotional resonance. Always, th this is where the English starts to break down. Always put me first for everything you do. Yeah. There's some words missing there. Um, that doesn't flow. Uh, I think maybe what you're saying is you always put me first in, in everything you do. There, there's, there's some problems there that need to get worked out. Coloring my days with fairy tales and sweet dream nights. Okay, that's a little flowery, the language, and it could work. But given the, the other issue that I, we just came across, it makes me think there's some English stuff here. And here's what I mean. Coloring my days with fairy tales. It's flowery. There's nothing like actually broken there, but it's an odd use of, of language. Coloring my days with fairy tales. This would literally be the first time I've ever heard somebody kind of describe that. And then it says, and sweet dream nights. So again, I'm, I'm, it's flowery. There, there's no like actual laws being broken here, but it's, a, it's an odd turn of phrase that we haven't heard before, right? And especially since we just tripped over this, always put me first for everything you do, it, it feels more like something kind of falling down in the, in the use of English. And less like this is like an intentional use of prose, if that makes sense. Um, I'm grateful your arms are always open to comfort me when my feelings hurt. So I think what you're trying to say there is when my feelings are hurt. That would be a turn of phrase that, that we're used to hearing. But when my feelings hurt makes it feel like, again, something in the English is, is falling down here. You are so special a gift from above. Uh, that's probably okay and can work. But so I think that the phrase itself, even this, you know, aside from everything else we've added here, probably needs a little bit of work. All right. That's all I have for this. I think we moved to wrap this up. Zappy, Kirsta, do you have any final thoughts you want to throw at this thing before we move on? I think, I think it, we've covered it. Yeah, I think, I think we've, uh, okay, got it. We uh, beat we this one to death. All right, let's get to our announcement. Yeah. That was such a dramatic <laughs> look there. It's also almost like, whew. he's intense. All right. <laughs> um, so top tips. Uh, look, we went over these two weeks ago. Um, I, I think we, we've covered literally all of these throughout the day. I, th I would like to move on to our announcement here. Um, I'd recommend, you know, Pause the stream right now if you want to spend some time on this. Um, and let's move on. All right, announcement. Oh, what's wrong with my emoji? That's supposed to be a right finger point. Okay, I need everybody to pretend we got a right. No, I'm fixing it. Um, so we have launched coaching. So Kirsta has been working really hard on our coaching program. Bam. There we go. I don't know why that was a problem. And uh, it is launched. So if you want to go check it out, go to coaching.shineon.com, coaching.shineon.com. There are two kind of uh, programs you can join. Both of them come with this kind of core video essential. Uh, it's, like a, it's like a small mini course on core skills for running Shine On products. Um, and you can see that uh, called out on the landing page right here. It includes a Shine On Fast Track course. We've got some core skill videos that come with the coaching program that you can kind of go in and watch. And we're going to keep those kind of updated throughout time. So you're always going to be able to stay current on what's working, what isn't working, new trends. If something new comes out in our testing, we're going to be able to share that with you, all that kind of stuff. So um, you're definitely going to want to check that out. So we have the fast track, which is which is much thinner than elite when it comes to the benefits. And we're going to talk about both of these fast tracks, 199 bucks a month. The elite is 697 uh, a month. Um, so with fast track and curse, I'm going to, I'm going to start throwing you some curveballs here. So we do some group coaching calls. We have peer calls and we have peer chat support on top of that, you know, the score core skills video. So Kirsta, tell us a little bit about what the group coaching calls, what they are, what people can expect 
uh, that kind of thing. Sure. So um, the fast track we created based on the core skills required to sh sell shine on. So this is more for, you know, beginner level and intermediate level. So just to uh, give you gold nuggets and fill in knowledge gaps and also um, give you the foundations of what's needed. In the group uh, coaching calls, we discuss relevant topics that are covered in fast track. So things like uh, phrase building exercises, like uh, product research over the shoulder. We, we also do ads over the shoulder. We Some people may post their designs and we can do uh, kind of what we do here, teardowns and just basically share insight. So if there's any updates or trends, things that we are testing and we're finding, uh, uh, of advantage or helping our campaigns, we do sh share them in the chats as well. So it kind of gives you like um, firsthand knowledge as things are progressing. So um, while they're not, you know, tested in depth, you still get access to things um, ahead of time. So it can help your results um, and it can help accelerate your results as well. Um, totally. And did you cover you, you kind of, it looks like you kind of, it sounded like you covered basically all of these. Um, did you kind of talk about the difference between the group coaching and the peer, uh, calls? So the peer calls, uh, primarily are for the, uh, the members of the group to come together. We will join those calls at time to time, but it's more for, for them to connect. So, um, it's good to share insight and struggles with people that are going through the same journey as yourself and kind of like the buddy system which we were talking about earlier you know you, you familiarize, familiarize yourself with others that can propel your success so um, you can help keep on top of each other's mindset so uh, keep keep them on par so it's the peer support sort of thing happening so like um, uh, I, I found like you know talking with peers was very helpful to keep my mindset on track. And that that's where, where the value is in, in the um, peer calls themselves. Yeah. So you've got group coaching calls where Kirsta or um, somebody else from, from the media buying team. So like myself, Zappy or Jim will hop on a call and it'll mostly be Kirsta, but we'll, we'll fill in some blanks there occasionally. And we'll hop on a call and uh, there may be a different topic that gets covered formally. It could be a Q and A session, could be open office hours, could be a number of things, but it's, it's like a group coaching kind of setting. And then we have the peer calls. So this is a second call you get every single week where you get to hop on with other people also in fast track uh, or elite, depending on which one you sign up for. And you're going to be able to share what's working, what's not working. Uh, maybe you have a product that you want tear, torn down that you're comfortable sharing with others. You can do that in that type of environment. Uh, you can get to know each other. You can hold each other accountable, all that kind of stuff. And then we also have chat support. So we actually have a Slack channel dedicated to Fast Track and to elite members. And you're going to be in Slack with your peers. And we're doing our best to make sure that we're creating an environment that's positive, that's upbeat, that's optimistic, where other people have a, like a growth mindset on how we can move forward into the future. We're, we're trying to create kind of a culture in this place where everybody will have the greatest chance uh, to succeed. So that is fast track. So again, you get with fast track, you get the kind of core skills videos, which will be updated over time as we go. And then you get the one grouping group coaching call a week with other fast track members, a peer coaching call a week with other fast track members, and then the Slack support. So you'll be in a Slack channel with other group coaching members uh, as well. Then we'll get over to Elite. So this is $6.97 a month. Again, it comes with core skills videos. Plus, so you get everything that's in Fast Track. Plus, you get some advanced uh, skills videos. So these might be videos on scaling, using UGC to the greatest effect. It might be some new uh, method that's like literally just come out that's hot off the presses that's maybe a little bit more advanced. It might be breakdown of like, uh, different marketing strategies. We, you know, we reference multiple times today, you know, top of funnel, middle of funnel, bottom of funnel. This is where we're going to get a little bit deeper. Now, again, it's don't think you're buying a course, right? It's like you're buying a package of content that's going to update throughout time and is going to get better throughout time, right? It's important that you keep that in mind if you make a purchase, because what you have today is likely going to be different than what you have next month, 
and then the month after and the month after. And it could be that the content is going to change too. As we get closer to Valentine's Day, it might shift to more stuff that's going to be relevant for Valentine's Day. If it gets to Mother's Day, it might shift again. If we get into Q2 uh, and Q3, where um, you know we kind of have a little bit of a dead zone with holidays, again, the content's probably going to shift to help support you during those time periods. All right, so let's get into some of the benefits of, uh, of uh, Elite here. So first of all, you get all the fast track stuff. We already covered that. Also, with uh, Elite, you're going to get two free message card designs per month. So two free message card designs per month. Cursa, um, let's talk about that real quick. How do you get the message cards? What do you have to do to request them? Uh, are they unique message cards? Are they message cards for the group? How does that work? So the free message cards are unique to the um, to the member, so they can request a design. We have a pin post in Slack where they can message one of our graphic designers to create the design. So this basically takes some of your time from actually creating the design. You can just uh, populate the phrase and articulate, you know, I just want a simple design. Like, uh, And a lot of members have come to uh, familiarize, just do it how Kirsten would do it. So they just basically uh, say, you know, I want like, my style and um and then the graphic designer will come up with the the design and you can test it within normally 24 hours so uh it gives you a lot of acceleration of your time so it, it it's just an added benefit i think that's really valuable yeah and so this is somebody that you've worked closely with they already know like all these best practices we've talked about with message cards they already know all this stuff. So when you request one of these message cards, you're going to get one that's that's kind of top of the line right out of the box. Um, next, we've got the elite group coaching calls. So again, it's kind of the same thing as the group coaching calls for Fast Track, except it's just elite members. The content's going to be a little different. We have the elite peer call. So if you're in the elite group, you'll have a peer call with other people in elite, right? So this is this is likely going to be people that are a little bit more advanced, a little bit down the road in terms of their uh, print-on-demand e-commerce journey. You also get premium seller support. So as a seller, we've got uh, uh, some special stuff kind of set up so that people inside this group, if you specifically have a problem, you're going to get premium support. Uh, we've worked out something with the customer support team to make that happen. You're also going to get chat support from the coaches. So Kirsten, what's the chat support from coaches? So basically, uh, this allows people to um, get support on whatever matters they need help with, whether it be uh, add specific questions or if it's um, or if it's just like message card review before launching ads. So any anything they really need support with, we're, we're there to help them. Um, this is provided quite useful for uh, previous uh, previous members and current members to support them along their journey. Um, but you know, this, this can sometimes like, sometimes I found like just little things that I've helped people with to correct has accelerated their, their campaign. So it, it can just be like a second eye of like, um, on, on your design that can change it in a totally different way and accelerate it. So just having that, um, second eye on a lot of the things like even, you know, Zappy and I have slightly different takes when we when we're digesting products so um you know ha having that ability to um share share what you're trying to do and we we can help and see if we can push it over the line for you dig it then we also have exclusive products so um exclusive products are exactly like it sounds we're actually going to have it's going to take us a little bit um we don't have these out of the gate I'm just being totally transparent but we are going to have products that are only available to people inside of Elite. Uh, we have a whole plan moving into uh, 2021, and we think we have a really neat uh, kind of uh, opportunity to give all of our Elite members here. So stay tuned for that. Uh, were you, Cursa, were you going to say something? I thought I heard somebody. 22. We're moving into Ah, man. <laughs> I'm stuck in 2020. I can't get out of it. I, I make this mistake all the time. Yeah, in 2022. Uh, we've got kind of a whole plan for making this reality. Also, early access products. So um, what we eventually hope to do is, is we have new products kind of come off the press. We're going to give early access to all of our um, Fast Track and Elite members. So you guys are going to get kind of, I'm sorry, your, our Elite members, not Fast Track. 
Um, so you're going to get early access to a product, which is going to give you a huge edge in the marketplace because you'll likely have a product uh, that maybe people have never seen before. And you're going to have very minimal competition kind of going after it and selling it. So early access products uh, as well. Then we have exclusive user generated content PSD. So these are UGC PSDs. So we've got all kinds of UGCs we take literally all the time. Um, we are going to start making some of the PSD files available to elite members so that you can take your message card. Uh, it's actually really cool the way it works. You can be able to go into Photoshop, find the layer uh, of the message card. You can double click it, drop your message card in there, and it will, it will automatically kind of render out your message card on the UGC. So we're going to be able to get you unique UGC that's not on the platform, that's not already in the rendering system or anything like that. And you're going to be able to get that. Uh, early and exclusively uh, so that you have kind of an edge in the marketplace. We also will have a dedicated account manager for you. So, you know, we have account managers here. It's something that says shine on a part. You'll have dedicated account managers uh, in Elite, and we're currently kind of working that process out. And then finally, UGC videos. So the way the UGC videos work is you're going to have to request them. Um, we, we are going to strongly encourage that you only request them after you've reached a certain sales threshold like at least 25, 50 sales. We, we kind of want you to have a proven product here. And then we'll work with you on getting you a unique UGC video to help you scale that product uh, to the next level. So that was a lot. I think we covered it all. Kirsta, did I miss anything? Yeah, so I just wanted to um, go back to the exclusive uh, UGC. So th this was one thing that we had in Triumph, which was previous Shine On Coaching that helped accelerate a lot of people's campaigns so basically all we were doing is taking ugc's cutting out the um the message card and putting our message card in and just testing with those so th th this is um one thing which can eliminate the primary objection when people are seeing these products in the news feed is is this real like uh is or is it a scam like that that's the main thing which accelerated so now that shine on has ugc's that's good but um we also have like we take a bunch of photos and we have additional ugcs which you know will be different from uh everyone else and the other thing is uh while we're also going to have the advanced rendering which is going to do a lot of this automatically again we'll have like a, a library on top of um the advanced renderers so maybe we'll change the the tone of the necklace make it a bit lighter or darker just to distinguish away from um you know every every other creative so it just gives that slight edge uh, which can um, make a significant difference yeah so i you know i think these are incredible programs especially right now we're in q4 we're in the thick of it sales are going to do nothing but increase um if you've ever hit a winner you know that the price for these programs it's, it's basically chump change compared to what you can stand to earn uh, if you, if you hit a, pro hit a product and don't forget right after Christmas, you have Valentine's day. It's another massive, massive holiday, uh, followed very quickly with, by mother's day and then father's day. We've got a whole new product line that's going to hit super well for father's day this year. So we're, we're super excited across the board. Let's move into some Q and a, we'll make this quick. Uh, what questions do you have about the coaching program? So what questions do you have about this stuff? Start dropping it in the chat now. We're going to start answering those. Um, if you're on the fence, you're trying to make a decision, you want to know what something covers or doesn't cover or anything like that, go ahead and drop them in the so, chat now. And we'll so try while we're waiting those. for that, I will mention that there has been a couple of members that joined Fast Track that have upgraded to Elite because they found products um, by going through the content and um, they want to scale them. So... Elite covers a lot of more advanced sort of Facebook strategies on how to scale. Um, so if if you are at at the starting sort of uh, level, you probably start with Fast Track. And if you are more advanced or you've been selling for a while or you've been selling T-shirts or you've been doing other sort of stuff, then probably Elite is more suitable. Yeah, so um, basically if you're new, Fast Track, if you've got any level of experience, probably elite is the best place to go. Um, hey, Kirsten, can I ask you to just uh, keep that, keep your trigger finger on that mute button uh, when you're not talking? <clears throat> Thanks, brother. Um, 
All right. So again, coaching.com, coaching.shineon.com. If you want to sign up for either of these, coaching.shineon.com. Let's start uh, looking at some of these questions. So, man, I think you're onto something here. Thanks, Mauricio. It's something we've been working on for quite a while now. Facebook user asks, how many spots in Elite? Uh, is there is there a cap on this, Kirsta? You're muted. Kirsta? Oh yeah, I'm muted. <laughs> um, I think I think we set fifty for elite, or for the launch. Yeah, fifty just to you know, we want to um, we want to make sure that we can support everybody, and we also want to make sure you know there's a lot of stuff in here that we need to fulfill on our side, and it's it's kind of the first time we've launched coaching programs, so we just want to make sure that uh, we're going to be able to support everybody. Uh, and their needs and then scale appropriately as we decide to take on uh, more members. So right now uh, it's 50. So if you want in, uh, I'd go do it. I, I'm not sure how many we're at, but it's, I believe we're over halfway full. So you're going to want to hurry up if you want to get into like, a week. Yeah. I think, I think we're at three quarters. Okay. So we're getting close to being uh, completely topped off there. All right. Um, let's see. Is UGC video going, going to be video or still shots? Uh, well, it, it's probably going to be video. We have a few different video, like, uh, uh, I don't know if template's the right word, but uh, the, um, of like shots and scenes that we, we know we can kind of go through to make a good UGC video. Um, so it'll, it'll likely be video. However, um, you know, we're open to experimenting with all kinds of stuff to help you scale. Uh, if you win, we win. So uh, we're pretty flexible as far as that goes. All right. Um, how many hours of video? So again, I, I would, uh, I'll let you take a shot at this one too, Kirsta, but I would, I would, you're not buying a course, you're buying coaching. So the hours of video content are likely going to grow every month, but also don't forget you have the group coaching calls. There are all these other benefits too. So I wouldn't get completely focused on the hours uh, of video. Um, not to mention, so, I would also add that uh, what's more important is the, the content and the quality of those hours um, as well. I've taken lots of courses that were bloated that with just junk in them. And I've taken other courses that were six hours that were, were uh, just, you know, it was all killer, no filler. So, Kirsten, what do you think? So this is actually like I, I had previously to Shine On Coaching. It was called Triumph Community. And we had hundreds and hundreds of hours of content and I literally uh, went there and sifted through all of it and picked the best and most relevant stuff um, and I confined it into the smallest amount of time possible. So it, it literally kind of is like a step-by-step. -step. So we set up platform and we, uh, you know, attach a domain, cre create like uh, a Facebook business manager, all the assets needed to run ads. So it's like literally everything you need to get started. Um, also, it, it goes into Canva, how to create a message card, how to do phrase research. So it covers everything you need really um, in a short amount of time. So I, I don't know the exact number of hours, um, but I, I think it's irrelevant. I think it, the quality um, the, is, the, is the key here. Um, so yeah, it, 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 it literally is just supplemental content that will grow over time. So as things get better or new trends or strategies come out, they will be added. Like f at the moment, I'm working on a new bid cap strategy, which is going to come out in elite, I think within the next week, uh, that's been quite stable for about two weeks now. So, um, like a lot of these strategies, which come out in elite have been tested with tens of thousands of dollars of ad spend uh, previous to release. So um, it's all tried and tested stuff. And we've had uh, previously top, media's, uh, top media buyers join um, uh, Triumph or Shine On Coaching now uh, to learn those <laughs> strategies, which is crazy to think that um, they, they work that well. So yeah, I, I would highly recommend for anyone that's serious about it to consider it um by the way i'd like to, to vouch for that too like uh 
when you were doing your coaching last year, we would see your students rise through the ranks. And I would always know too. I'd see the design and I'd go, 10 bucks says that's a cursed uh, student. And uh, most of the time I was right. All right. Um, can you start in fast track and move into elite later? Yes. So uh, as I mentioned before, we actually had that case happen a couple of times already. So uh, I, I would definitely um, start and that way you keep your um, your capital expenditure low. And if you start to make money, obviously uh, you want to accelerate that and invest it f so you can upgrade. Yeah. So we wanted to keep the barrier of entry as small as possible. Um, and, you know, once you start seeing that progress and you start getting the results, then obviously you want to accelerate that. And that's why we have the elite to um, give you the best possible support we can to push it to the next level. All right. I think we're going to take maybe two more and then wrap this up. So Facebook user asks, so on fast track, do they take you step by step till the product is up? One thing I want to, I'm going to throw this to you, Kirsta, but before I do, I want to say that we already do this for free for everybody. So if you go into uh, the shine on dashboard, so I'm talking about the dashboard and you just scroll down a little bit, like underneath the, the chart or whatever is at the very top of the screen, you're going to see a, an entire course we have made that we give you for free. I believe the course is called uh, how to get your first sale or road to your first sale or quick start course. Uh, we went through a few, a few different names, so I can't remember exactly which one we stuck with, but it's right there. And it's, I think it's 16 videos. It literally walks through everything you need uh, to get started. All, all the best practices, there's some over the shoulder stuff, things like that. Fast track and elite is for those that are, that are, they're beyond, um, it's not their first day in, uh, in shine on. Obviously, if it is your first day, you can still benefit immensely from the course. I'm just saying, I'm, or the coaching, I'm just saying that some of the kind of basic steps are already there. We already tell you how to get up every morning, put your trousers on and get the work. This stuff will just help you be more effective. All right. So, uh, Kirsta, what do you think? So, on fast track, do they take you step by step till the product's up? Yeah, we 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 pretty much covered that just now. Um, it, it literally has everything you need. So, how to create a message card, how to set up Shine On platform, how to put the pixels in, how to create everything on Facebook side of things. So, business manager set up, uh, what the account structure looks like, like as an overview, and how all the assets come together to give you your ads. Um, and yeah, it literally is like everything you need. And it, it's got dirty 30 method explained in there as well. And that, that that's where it leaves off. So if you need anything more advanced, then um, obviously you can upgrade to Elite after after you go through the initial journey of getting your sale, your first 50 sales or 100 sales, and then, um, then you can transition over. All right, so we're going to take one last question. We're going to wrap this thing up. Someone says it's billed monthly. How easy is it to opt out after a month or a few months? So it, it's no uh, it's no obligation. So anytime it's cancel anytime. So anyone that uh, feels that they're not getting value or it's not for them, they can just uh, go back to the Teachable subscription and unsubscribe, and they will be uh, no longer billed monthly. Yeah, guys, um, we're freaking shine on here. Uh, we we are not looking to take advantage of anybody. Um, if you walk in and you decide it's not for you, raise your hand and uh, we'll take care of you 100% on that. Um, and that, by the way, is across the board. That's kind of a cultural thing we like to build towards our sellers. Uh, you know that we, we try to provide best in class uh, customer support. Your, your people, like if you have a seller on your, or a buyer on your page, they can actually call a phone number and we'll answer it on our side. These are not false promises. Uh, uh, we mean them. So yeah, if you're in there and you just decide for whatever reason, it's not for you, um, you know, feel free to uh, raise your hand and we'll make sure we take care of you. Again, I want to reiterate, we're trying to build a culture in both Fast Track and Elite um, that is kind of positive, where people have a growth mindset, where we can all help each other uh, succeed. That's one of the things that's very important for us to do. So uh, we also have to lead by example. And that includes, you know, if you're not happy, we'll make sure to uh, help you out. So let's see. I think, uh, I think that's it. All right. So 
If you're watching this on YouTube uh, and you want to start selling, or if you're in Facebook and you've never started selling with us, go to shineon.com. It takes like 60 seconds to sign up and uh, you can get started today. Uh, if you're on YouTube, you need to make sure you join our Facebook group. We jump so much incredible content here. It's 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 insane the value we provide here. Go to bit.ly forward slash go shine on to join our Facebook group. If you want to subscribe to our YouTube channel, if you're on Facebook and you want to subscribe, go to youtube.com forward slash C forward slash shine on POD. And then finally, Instagram, you can find us at, at shine on uh, at shine on just at shine on. So. Thank you so much for joining. We really appreciate everybody. We hope you have an amazing week and uh, happy selling. Take care. Take care. Hey, hey, Michael here again. Thank you so much for checking out today's video. If you like the content, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And there's one more thing I want you to do. Check out the links in the description below. I want you to look at the link to shineon.com where you can sign up and become a seller with us today. It literally takes 60 seconds and it could change your life. Secondly, I want you to go to our Facebook group. It's the most engaged e-commerce group on the planet. We're constantly sharing important tips, tricks, and things like that that can help you on your seller journey and level up your e-commerce game. Thank you so much for watching the video and I hope you have a great one. Take care.